Two months ago, I set out on a six month challenge to finally get my crap together and lose some weight. I'm specifically trying to lose about 30 pounds by my 40th birthday, which is on May 1st. Today, we're gonna talk about how my second month of this six month challenge has gone. By the way, if you're new here, I am Jen and I am delighted to meet you. I've been experimenting with a mostly meat diet for two years now, and I have a lot of videos on this channel to show exactly how that's gone and sort of the trial and error along the way. If you saw my video from last month, basically all of November, you'll see that for my first month of this weight loss challenge, I really struggled. Specifically, I had a very hard time with binge eating. I ended the month of November weighing even more than when I started. This month was better, sort of, but also kind of worse, sort of, so buckle up. For most of December, I ate two meals per day and tried to focus specifically on getting enough protein. For the first three weeks of the month, I did pretty well. I filmed so much real-time footage, I ended up scrapping most of it because it would have been very long and very boring. So I'm just going to share a couple of little tidbits with you along the way of real-time footage. Now here's a little look at my weight for the first two and a half to three weeks of December. You can see that it was steadily going down. I was getting really excited. I was getting very near 100, the 170s, which I have not weighed that in a long time. And if you're thinking 170s, that's a lot. Here's a photo of me at my lowest as a carnivore, which was 172. And I felt really good here. Now I, my goal is actually a little bit less than this, but if I could get to this and just stick with it, I would be very pleased. So here is the beginning of the footage that I filmed in December of the parts that I'm going to share anyway. And the main thing that I notice now looking back is that even though I was losing weight, I was really struggling. I was white knuckling. I was hungry a lot. And it was just not easy at all. I was really hopeful that I could mentally work through my urges to binge, but you'll see how that turns out. I'm just getting off work. It's December 3rd. So three days into this plan I've had of changing a few things, increasing my protein intake and recording every morsel of everything I eat. There was more, but those are two things that come to mind. And I really struggled today not to go to the gift shop and buy myself a box of milk that's. So as I've mentioned many times before, as a pure carnivore, I never cheated once. I never binge ate. I, I certainly wasn't trying to beg myself not to go to the gift shop to buy milk that's at work. But ever since adding some foods back, that has been a struggle for me one sort of innocent little thing will ultimately lead to binging on candy. So uh, it's been hard. So uh, there's a couple of thoughts I have about that. One is um, I am including flavored electrolytes in my diet right now. And so I am getting that sweet flavor from Stevia. And when I was a carnivore, one of the pieces of advice that I gave people was get rid of all the sweet tastes. That really will help. And it did help me, but I, now I'm kind of thinking that might not be the best thing for me at least because it does eliminate a trigger, but it doesn't actually eliminate my binge eating. I thought it did. I thought it was cured from binge eating. I hadn't done it in a year and a half, but as soon as I started adding these foods back, suddenly my brain is like, this is a trigger food. And I started having urges to binge again. And so, a book that I just read for like the fourth time is Brain Over Binge by Katherine Hansen. It's so incredibly helpful. I found it so helpful when I was a carnivore, but now I'm almost finding it more helpful now that I'm adding a few foods in when it comes to this whole trigger food thing. So again, I think that I was just masking my symptoms a little bit before by avoiding the foods that sort of opened the door. And now what I really need to do is recognize my urges and, and ignore them and don't give in to them because it's this is all according to Katherine Hansen and I completely agree with her from my perspective. This isn't necessarily a problem with me. My brain is fine. It's not like there's um, like this emotional need to binge. Like it's nothing like that. It's truly a habit that I've created that did start with dieting restrictively as a young kid. And so then my survival instincts kicked in. And then I, over 20 plus years, I've been creating a habit that anytime I feel an urge, 
I give in to it and binge to get rid of that urge. Oh, if you haven't read the book, I highly, highly recommend it. So the point is, maybe stevia is making me crave milk duds, but it's still up to me to recognize the urge to go get milk duds and know that's going to turn into a binge. It's up to me to recognize that and not do it so I can break this sort of brain wiring problem. My brain's fine. My brain wiring is a little off of feeling an urge, giving in and strengthening that habit. I've got to feel the urge, recognize it, ignore it, and then sort of celebrate having not given into it so I can get out of that terrible pattern. So where I'm going with this is I'm not yet going to just say, okay, forget it with the stevia. I might need to pay more attention to what I'm doing with driving. I might be lost. But anyway, um, so I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to just continue to work through this, recognize it, and go from there. It's hard. It's really, really hard. But I'm going to go home and eat a regular dinner and maybe have like something with CPI, I guess, but not medicinally, right? Like just as part of my day. It's not like, well, I'm having these cravings, so I guess I'll just have something sweetened with stevia. I don't think that's the best choice, but if it's something that I would naturally have once or twice a day or whatever, I, I think it's fine, though this is all a work in progress, right? Like this is not a final answer, but I'm just telling you what I'm experiencing right now and why I'm making the decisions I'm making. For the record, I'm now ready to give up sweets and stevia and all of the things. You'll see why in just a little bit. Let's take a break for just a minute for me to show you something really great that did happen this month. I took to social media to complain about how hard it is to find really wide shoes for my really wide feet. And by the end of the month, I had a solution. Here's some footage that I filmed at the beginning of the month so you can see what I'm talking about. Today's day five, December 5th. I'm in a remarkably good mood, feeling great today. I went to the gym this morning, had a good leg day, and now I'm out on a walk, uh, multitasking. <laughs> so that explains the hair cap. I'm doing some hair oiling, which is another story for another day. But one thing I want to tell you is about my feet. They're so freaking wide. They're fine, I don't have pain or anything, but the shoes I'm wearing now are Brooks and they're wide. Um, D, I guess, is the size for the width. I specifically bought them because they're white. But let me show you what's happened. It probably took three months to happen, and now here we are. So I've worn a hole right there on the side of my big toe, and then I've worn a hole over here on the side of my pinky toe. That's because of my stupid wide feet. So here before too long, I intend to get some new shoes and see if I can find something that's better, that comes in a wide width, but that still doesn't break down really quickly because of my weird feet. So if you have any advice, definitely let me know. Well, a shoe company called Fitville reached out to me and I've since gotten two new pairs of their shoes. One is for working out and one is for work. These are honestly probably the first properly fitting shoes I've ever owned. They have sizes up to 4E, which is like extra, extra wide. And before I was getting wide, but it was like D, which from the standpoint of Fitville, that's kind of a medium width shoe. So the shoes that I got are 2E, which is actually wide, much wider than the ones that I had from Brooks. So if you've got super wide feet like me and you wanna check these out, look at the um, description and there will be some more info there. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. About a weekend is where I started seeming like I was feeling really hungry. Here's a little look at that. Today is day six of my second month of working toward my weight loss goals. And this is the first day this week, this month, that I have just been feeling really hungry. It's about 2 p.m. I got home from work because I got off early today. I'm just hungry and I'm craving like chocolate and stuff like that. Now, I'm more prepared because I've worked through this for um, last month and then some time before that with my former coach, Jen Winkler, and it's become very apparent to me that when I'm about to start my period, I just am like way more craving-y. I'm way more likely to start binging. So what I'm going to do is have some ground beef. I already had this prepared. It's nothing exciting, but 
if I'm really hungry, not just wanting to eat, then this will fix that problem. If I'm still craving, let's say chocolate, after this, I'll know. It's just me having cravings and I need to recognize those cravings and ignore them. So here goes nothing. <laughs> I'm hopeful this beef will help. You can see that I was pretty optimistic there about my ability to resist my hunger. But in retrospect, you can only rely on willpower for so long. Here we are, December 8th, but I wanted to hop on and just share a few thoughts. <laughs> Lucy is determined to get in on this because she knows I'm on the floor. She wants to get petted. But um, basically, I'm just feeling really proud of myself for a couple reasons. One is I am I was just standing here walking around feeling a little bit hungry. And ugh, I barely ever feel hungry. So just getting to the point where I can even feel hungry is kind of an interesting thing. I don't know why it's kind of a struggle for me to even get there. It's like I always am feeding myself before I get hungry, which is kind of silly. I, I suppose it's something I've been probably training myself to do all my life. But um, I also, I understand that mathematically, surely I'm going to have to be hungry sometimes to lose weight. And so I hope to kind of train my mind to think I'm hungry, I'm probably losing weight. Now, of course, you can take that way too far and way under eat. Don't worry, I'm not doing that. But um, so that's one little reflection I have right now. And then two, it's now been, I guess, nine days since the last time I binged. The last time I binged was a couple days left in November. So nine or 10 days, I'm not sure. And I know that's not very long, especially because I went a year and a half before when I was a carnivore. But when you're in the midst of binging, oh my gosh, anything more than like three days is practically a miracle, at least for me. So I'm feeling really good about that. I'm starting to think that some of my issues with binging are still a result of eating too little. And I know for many people, 16, 17, 1800 calories is not too little, but I really think it might be for me because for this last week, I've eaten definitely an average of probably 21, 2200 calories, and I've still lost like five pounds this week. So, I mean, obviously, I got to keep going and see how it all shakes out, but I'm feeling really good about that. I feel like there was more I wanted to say, but Lucy is distracting me. But isn't she cute? You're so cute, baby. I love you. Here's the last positive snippet from the month and kind of how things start going wrong. Today is day 15 and I was thinking we could have a little chit chat. There's a few things that I want to just discuss about how I'm feeling today. So it's been over two weeks since I've binged at all. I really haven't even had a lot of urges to binge and when I have, I've just recognized them and said, this is an urge to binge regardless of what I've done, if I've been around a trigger, if I've even eaten a trigger, which I really haven't, but regardless, like I don't have to give in to any urges. So like I've made, oh no, Matt's coming upstairs. Now I'm getting self-conscious. <laughs> huh. I've made him some of those oatmeal balls that have been dangerous for me before. And actually I spent today making 50 chocolate chip sugar cookies. Are you kidding me? This is a very bad idea. Which is a long story. Suffice it to say, I have this hidden talent of decorating really artistic sugar cookies and I agreed to make some for his Christmas, his family Christmas thing. But honestly, if I didn't feel like I was in a place I could resist that, I wouldn't have made those oatmeal balls and I wouldn't have made those cookies and I've done fine. So I'm really proud of myself for that. You can't do it. So far, things have gone great this month. I've lost like eight pounds so far. Now, that's only six from where I initially started. It's just that I had gained weight by the end of November. So um, maybe tomorrow or sometime soon, I should be in the 170s for the first time in like six months. So I'll be really, really excited for that. But anyway, it's just really good news to report today. Oh, poor girl. I am very sorry for what's about to happen next. Today is day 16 and I feel like I'm having one of my 
only hard days this month. The only hard day? Are you kidding me? You've been white knuckling it all month. I've just been really hungry. And I've been saying that this whole two meal a day thing has just been working so beautifully. Um, and I don't know if I didn't eat enough for breakfast this morning. I had about a 900 calorie breakfast, which is a lot. 65 grams of protein, 69 grams of fat. But around lunchtime, my stomach was grumbling and I've just been really hungry all day. Now there are days where my breakfast is bigger, like 1200 calories. Maybe I just need to do that. Make sure that I'm getting that many calories. Um, it's hard though, because then I feel like I don't have that many calories left for dinner. Like I'm still in that space a little bit of, this is how many calories you're allowed kind of thing. And I think I'm onto something with not necessarily allowing a certain amount of calories, just keeping an eye on how much it is and sort of guiding myself in a direction of like, don't, don't make it 4,000. But maybe on a day like today, I just need a little bit more. I don't know. But on the other hand, it's like I'm losing weight. So it makes sense that I would be a little bit hungry sometimes. Maybe I need to just embrace that feeling of hunger. Like it's certainly not going to kill me. I don't know. Why is this so hard? I just got off work from the hospital on day 17 and I'm still having another one of those days where I just feel hungry, even though I had quite a bit of food for breakfast. I had like 1300 calories. Um, so I got a snack, I guess you could say from the gift shop. It's pork rinds. Pork rinds are usually a little dicey for me anyway. These are worse than typical because they're barbecue, but I'm going to eat these and I'm just going to be very mindful of if I'm feeling very snacky or if I'm actually hungry and I'm going to know that just because I eat these does not mean, well, I blew it or whatever. I have to just binge all day. That's not the case. I'm still in control of what I do. I'm still in control of recognizing what's an urge and avoiding it and only eating when I'm hungry. Now, if I'm being really honest, I'm probably not really physically hungry right now. I was all day yesterday. Right now, I think I'm just sort of preoccupied with food. I'm still going to eat this. You just said you weren't hungry. What the heck are you doing? Throw those things out the window. I'm making that conscious decision. It's not out of my control. And I will let you know later how it goes. Spoiler alert. It went terribly wrong. And now here's where it all starts to fall apart. Today is day 19 and I've been doing really good this month, December month two. Until yesterday, I had a terrible day. I mean, I had a fine day, but I ate a bunch of bad food. Um, there was nothing. There was no, like, emotional upset or whatever. I'm telling you, my binging is not really related to my psychiatric <laughs> mental health stuff, you know. People say, it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. That is not the thing for me. Here's when I, how I can look back and see how it started. So the day before yesterday, I do remember feeling like extra hungry. And so I had my normal big breakfast and then I did allow myself something, sort of a lunch type of food. And then I went out to dinner and I just ate a lot more food. I ate about 3000 calories worth of food two days ago. I was not binging, I was in control, but I was very aware that I had an increased appetite. And then yesterday, because I'd eaten more food the day before, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna eat much for breakfast. I'm not really that hungry. I think that was a mistake. Now I did end up eating something for breakfast, but it was like pepperonis and cheese. Mistake number two. One mistake was not eating enough for breakfast. Number two mistake was eating like basically processed foods for breakfast. Even though it would be carnivore-ish, it was not the best choice. And then I got a secret Santa gift at work, which was basically more processed meat and cheese. It was like a salami and cheese roll up thing. And I ate that. And then I got home and I think it had already been a couple of little things chipping away at my um, resolve. I saw those stupid freaking oatmeal balls in the fridge. And I told myself, okay, Matt has to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then he's leaving for vacation. So he only needs three days worth. If there's more than that, I'm going to eat one. And there was four. So it's like I did this bargaining with myself. And so then I ate 
two of those balls. And then I hopped on the treadmill to do my walk for the day. But it was, I, I like think I mentally knew it was over by then. And then I, I went to go run a couple of errands and on the way I stopped at Starbucks and got a drink and a couple Rice Krispie treats. They're called Marshmallow Dream Bars. They're so freaking good. And then I went to like Hobby Lobby to get some stuff and I bought a bunch of candy. And then I ate a bunch of candy and Matt even confronted me about it. He saw, he saw Milk Dud box in my purse and was like, why do you have Milk Duds? He's like, if you're trying to be healthy and you're trying to be carnivore, this is not the way to do it. And he was trying to be a nice, supportive boyfriend, but I just felt like caught, you know, like this doesn't really ever happen. And he's like, sometimes I'm hungry and I just don't eat because I know I shouldn't, you know, I'm like, I know, I know mentally, I know, but I, I don't, I can't explain it. It's like, I can't explain it to him because he doesn't understand so anyway, I ate a bunch of candy. I tracked all my food yesterday, every bit of it. I ended up eating about 5,000 calories, which I know is, you know, that means I'm going to probably gain a pound. Now, I did not weigh myself this morning. I'm sure it's, I'm sure the scale is up many pounds, but I know if I can get myself back on track that like, ultimately, I will have gained a pound. It's not that big of a deal. But the big deal is when I can't rein it back in. And I'm still really struggling with this. So I've had a really great month. I've had three weeks of no binging at all. So I'm definitely doing better this month. But I don't want to have this at all. You know, I don't want to still be experiencing this. And I am planning to go completely carnivore next month. But I don't want my binging to be fixed because I'm carnivore. I want it to be fixed because I figured out how to fix it. Now, I will settle for it being fixed because I'm carnivore. That is absolutely one of the best things about being a carnivore, I think. But still, like I want to not have to worry that if I ever change my diet a little bit, then I'm going to go back to binging now that I know that that's what I've done. Um, now, a couple of things that I think are going to help me is seeing all the stuff that happened to my body last night after binging. So, um, for one thing, I track my body temperature with this aura ring, which links to a, um, a, like a fertility app that tracks your, um, a bunch of ovulation signs. And then it also predicts your period and stuff. Anyway, my temperature should be pretty low right now. And in about a week, it should go up quite a bit after I ovulate. But it went way up last night, like a week early. It should not have gone up like that. So I know like my temperature was way high last night, which clearly I'm all inflamed from eating all that junk food. And then I can see on my sleep app, which is also from this aura ring, that my resting heart rate was way high, like 10 beats per minute higher than normal. And um, my heart rate variability was way low, which is not good. So a lot of, you know, physical immediate results. And I, I'd like to think that knowing that is going to help me next time. But anyway, I'm just in this place right now where I'm very frustrated with myself. I feel like crap. I don't feel like doing anything and I got a lot to do today. I'm so mad at myself. And I also am very aware that this is a very dangerous place to be. One day after a binge, usually usually they turn into a couple days. So I've got to be very, very careful. And hopefully filming this will help me put this in perspective and get myself back together. So here's what I'm going to do. Tonight or tomorrow morning, I'm going to get on here again and let you know how I did. is day 21 and unfortunately I basically just got off what I would consider a three-day bender so the last filming I did was after my first day of binging and I was like I'm gonna get it together I'm gonna tell you how good I did at the end of the day and I just it's just been really bad I just, I'm so disappointed in myself and I don't even want to go into details of what it 
what it looked like, but I'll just tell you that it got worse every day. And yesterday I was just like driving around town, throwing away um, wrappers to food so I wouldn't be caught again because that is humiliating. And then anything I did have to throw away at, at home at Matt's house, it's like stuff it in the bottom of the trash can and then take out the trash, you know? So I can throw away the trash, but I can't throw away how I look when I like gain five pounds in three days or just my face blows up or I'm laying in bed like holding in my gas because I'm so uncomfortable. And you know, none of these things are things on a carnivore diet. I'm just, uh, I really should have said all of this not on camera because now I'm going to get it all out and I'm just going to flood you with it. But I just really thought I could handle myself. And I'm telling you, there's no like, I'm nervous about this or I'm depressed or this. None of that started this. What started this was looking in the fridge three days ago and thinking, hmm, those oatmeal balls look really good. I could just have one. And if there's enough for Matt to take one to work every day and there's one extra, I'm going to eat it. And there was, there was one extra. So I ate it. And that just set it all off. And I would like to think I have more control than eating one little thing and then spending three days eating literal poisonous garbage. But... I just don't seem to, and I don't know if I ever will, and I'm just, it's, it's so frustrating because I'm like a very successful, rational, rational, rational person, and I cannot get this part of my life under control unless I just completely remove all of those things. Like when I was carnivore for a year and a half, I'm almost feeling like, that was more miraculous than I ever knew. I already knew it was a freaking miracle, but then I was like, oh, well, I've got this now. I, I've got this under control. But then every day I just get a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, and then pff, throw it all away. And then I'm just binging for days. And I can't even say that today is going to be a better day, but I am determined. I, I honestly think the only thing I can do is just eliminate all of those foods. I was going to go fully carnivore anyway, January 1st, and now it's December 21st. I just need to do it early because this is a very dangerous zone. It's like a week and a half left of the month, a week and a half left of the whole year. I'm about to go to North Dakota for a whole week to spend with my boyfriend and his family. Like those are all really great excuses for me to spend the next week and a half binge eating in which case I will have a terrible time through the holidays, a terrible time with Matt's family. I'll gain 10, 20 pounds. Like it's a bad, bad idea. I've got to get this under control today. So as of today, I'm just gonna go fully carnivore. Now I've learned a lot of things over the last few months to help me be a little bit more successful as a carnivore. For one thing, I was eating too much before as a carnivore. For another, I do need some carbs, so I'm going to get them from raw milk. Um, but I, I was considering at one point drinking some alcohol when I was in North Dakota. I was considering just lots of things that are all a very bad idea. They were all my brain trying to trick me into just... Oh God, I don't even know. I can't. This is not going to be very rational. I'm saying rational again. This is not going to be a very clear conversation. I think I need to think about this for a while and, and actually mull it over and give a little bit better presentation later. But I just, this is how it feels right now. It's terrible. I kind of want to be able to look back at this and remember for myself because I don't ever want to feel like this again. And I just don't understand why it's so hard. Today is day 22. I finally got myself together yesterday and ate like a normal human. I only ate carnivore food. Everything went fine. I still did not dare weigh myself this morning because I know that it'll be several pounds up. So it'll probably be a while <laughs> before I weigh myself. It may be the end of this month when I have to do it for my check-in video. But um, 
I'm having a hard time right now. I just met a friend for Manny Petty and um, my brain is like, stop by Target and get some milk duds and some caramel popcorn. Like it is such a strong urge, so freaking strong. It's like almost impossible to resist, but I'm just trying to sit here and say, no, I will not feel, I will love it for the 30 minutes I'm eating it. And then I'll feel like terrible. And I already feel so self-conscious about the way my body looks today and the way my face looks and I'm like breaking out. And also my psoriasis is not good. Um, so there are these really immediate effects. All right, I got interrupted by a phone call, which was actually helpful. It was a good distraction. Now I had already decided that I was not going to stop at Target and get milk duds and caramel popcorn, but it's like the urge to do so is so tangible and so real. And I'm so convinced that if I just do it this one time, it'll be the last time. Like how many last times have I had? It's so ridiculous. And like I said, I'm already feeling super self-conscious in my skin. I don't want it to get worse and then I leave for North Dakota to spend the week with my boyfriend and his family and I just feel like a terrible, disgusting monster the whole time. Like, I definitely don't want that. So my rational brain was basically talking me down and I finally got through that, but it's like, it's going to be like this for a while. That's one of the worst things about binging when you give in is that then it's like this for a while and you have to just keep practicing not giving in to those stinking urges. It's so freaking hard. Okay, that is very heavy. I'm so glad I captured it on video though, because honestly now, today I'm a little late filming this. Today is January 5th. And as of now, I've kind of forgotten about that. I forgot how heavy it was. I forgot how upset I was. And so I don't know if this will be useful for me to look back on in the future, but maybe. So I am glad that I have that footage. And I'm very pleased to say that as of December 22nd, when I basically said, forget it, I'm going carnivore, I haven't had any binges at all. And that's even going through Christmas, spending over a week in North Dakota with my boyfriend and his family, doing all the family celebrations. Everyone else was eating and drinking and doing all the things. And then it was New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and then traveling back home. And I did not have one slip up. And I just find it amazing that just... Being carnivore can do that, but it's like, you know, you're not having any of those tempting sweet tastes. And so my obsession with food has just been gone. I mean, the first couple of days were really rough. Like when I was saying, oh, I really want to go to Target and get caramel popcorn and whatever. That day I hadn't had anything sweet, but that was very shortly removed from the sweet binging that I'd been doing. So now, I mean, I'm finding that I'm not obsessing over food. Oh, and here's one other kind of good thing, I guess, which is that um, I did not weigh myself for all the end of December. And then when I got home, I did weigh myself. By the time I was able to weigh, it was January 2nd, and I weighed 185.4 or something like that. So I'm a little bit less than when I very first started this at the beginning of November, and I'm a little bit more than the lowest I got to in December but I promise you I was probably in the 190s when I was binging like crazy. So uh, as far as the weight goes, I'm, I would say I'm really not making much progress. It's been two months. I'm basically right where I started. I've, I've just struggled so much specifically with the binging and gosh, I don't want to spend my life just going up and down and up and down and I've said before how being a carnivore was such a miracle for me. I did not binge at all. I swear to God, obviously I'm being very honest about all the details now. So I have no reason to lie about it before and tell you I wasn't binging if I was, but it just was, it just wasn't even an issue. You know, it wasn't even really something I thought about before, which is part of, I think the trick, if you're thinking about food all the time, it's really hard not to just snowball and turn into a Benjapalooza. So man, it's so obvious to me now more than ever that I just need to be a carnivore, if only to manage my binge eating. But also it helped me so tremendously with my skin health when it comes to my psoriasis, which is worse now. Um, I have a lot of spots right now after 
all the things I ate. And I know the haters are going to say, well, it wasn't the vegetables and stuff. It was the sugar. Well, yeah, it probably mostly was the sugar, but I cannot stop eating. I physically cannot stop binging when I'm not carnivore. And I hate that. I wish that I could mentally conquer this and just truly be able to deal with it in with my thoughts. But I'm not there yet. You know, I may never get there. And I have a solution and the solution is abstinence. And so that's what I'm going to have to do. And maybe someday that will change. But now that I've tried this and been so confident I could do it, I'm less confident that that will change. And that's okay. It's basically just like an alcoholic never drinking again. So for all of the month of January, I will be 100% carnivore. I'm not even doing coffee. I'm not doing spices, nothing. Um, so I promise to let you know exactly how it goes. I'm very confident actually, even after those two tumultuous months, I'm very confident that this is the key, that I'm not gonna binge at all. And then I'll finally be able to do an update video for you where I've lost weight and kept it off. And no crying or having to admit that I was a binge eater. And actually while I'm at it, let me share one more embarrassing story with you, okay? So I mentioned how Matt, my boyfriend, caught me in a binge sometime during December and it was humiliating and it was, okay? It was really humiliating. Well, when we left for Christmas to go to North Dakota, he left before me, a couple days before me. I had to stay and work and stuff. And I was just eating all kinds of crap in the house before I left to meet him. And one of the things I ate was his microwave popcorn. There was, I think there were actually two bags left. I ate them both. And then I did not binge the whole time in North Dakota, as I said. So by the time we got home at the beginning of January, I was mm, 10 days into no binging. I was feeling pretty good. And, but we got home that first night and he wanted to watch a movie and then I was in the shower and he went to make popcorn and said, Hey babe, did you eat, eat all the popcorn? And I was just like, yes, I did before we left. And so it was kind of late in the evening. I had just gotten out of the shower, you know, pajamas, wet hair, all the things. And he was just so disappointed because he knew there was popcorn. He wanted to eat the popcorn for this movie night we'd planned and blah, blah, blah. So I ended up almost like angrily going to the store to buy more popcorn, but not angry at him. You know, he didn't ask me to do it. I just was like, of course I will replace the popcorn. And then he felt bad, like he was a bad boyfriend for making me, though he wasn't making me go get more popcorn. And I just felt so stupid. And when I got back with the popcorn, he apologized and said, I'm so sorry. Like, am I the worst boyfriend ever? And I was like, no, no, you didn't make me. I offered to go. And I'm not mad, I'm just embarrassed. You know, I was just being honest, I'm humiliated. And then he felt, you know, then he felt bad that I was embarrassed. And so it's just like this whole cycle that even when you're not binging anymore, it's still humiliating. So man, I kind of hope that story sticks with me. I, I know I didn't do a very good job capturing it for you, but it was just so embarrassing, you know, and there are lots of embarrassing moments as a binge eater in the moment. But it's rare, at least for me, that it pops up a week or more later. And that's probably the first time that's happened, actually. So that one stung a lot. Anyway, I've not given up hope yet. Now, if another month goes by and I'm still struggling, okay, I'll save you your time. And I will probably give up making these videos. But I'm telling you, this is the time that I'm actually going to get my ish together. And I'm going to lose weight. And I'm going to even if I didn't lose weight, if I can just stop freaking binging, that would be something. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that that will lead to losing weight as well. So stay tuned for my third month update, which will be, which will take place over the course of January and then will be posted in February. And man, I hope it'll be better news. But I, you know, as I've posted these last two, so many of you have messaged me and said, Thank you for being so vulnerable. This is me exactly. You know, I know that you guys know what this is like if you've been a binge eater, especially. So this is for you. This is my love letter for you to know. I know how much it sucks. Ugh, it's just the freaking worst. But there's a solution and we're going to figure it out. And someday we'll all get to kind of compare notes and, and share how we got out of this stupid crap. We're going to get there, okay? So if you like this, and especially if you watch this whole long video, thank you so much. You are my people. And let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see next time or 
anything at all. Um, if you'd like, you are welcome to follow me on Instagram. Delighted to meet you. I'm pretty responsive over there to DMs. So if you can't reach me here, try over there. I hope your year is off to a great start and I will talk to you soon.